Good afternoon, Blender Conference, and thank you for welcoming us. My name is Pierre Andriani. I'm the manager at Tata Motors in the UK. I spent 12 years at General Motors in Detroit before uh, becoming the manager here. In uh, December of 2014, Mathilde graduated from her school, and this is when I gave her her first interview in November of 2014. And this is one of the first time I've seen a blender in action. So the rendering of the helicopter was really the first time I ever seen a blender, and I was impressed at the time. In January, or before a second interview, I had the seats that had to be modeled in-house, and I was debating if I should use polygonal modeling. Knowing that Mathilde used Blender, I was wondering if we could model those seats in Blender. So she did a test for me, and after three to four hours, she finished the seats. And that really was for me the first telltale sign that we should use Blender. So after the first test of the seats, we went uh, all the way to full adoption of Blender in about four months, and Mathilde will detail all these steps in her presentation. Uh, about Mathilde, as I said, she has uh, helped us with Blender. She has modeled uh, cars. She also modeled uh, organic figures, such as self-portrait. She's quite the expert in modeling, figure modeling, lighting, texturing, and she will detail the outline of Project X that we did in-house. Once again, thank you for welcoming us. We're really happy to be there, and I'll let Mathilde walk you through our presentation. Thank you. So that was the, the talk of my manager, basically. So. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry for this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I will start by introducing my company, a little bit, bit of history and a bit of the future. Then I will speak about the process, how we integrated Blender in our process. Then how we see the future of our process with Blender and we finish by some question and reply and thing like this. So first, uh, Tata Motors European Technical Center, so TMETC to be short, as now 10 years old, we are based in UK, in Coventry, and we are a fully owned company by Tata Motors. We are doing some design research and development. So we are part of three design studios in Tata Motors. Uh, so the two, two other ones are the Tata Motors Design Pune in India and Trelix in Italy. Um, in UK, we are mainly doing some city cars and some advanced um, creations, so concept cars. Um, in 2017, we will be relocated in the National Automotive Innovation Center, so that's for now in, new, that will be a new, new building, and we will be in partnership with uh, Jaguar Land Rover, Warwick Manufacturing Group, and the UK government. So um, now we'll speak a little bit more about uh, our process. So basically that's our process. The thing we wanted to change is everything about the sketch modeling. So um, basically to be short, we are starting with a sketch from the designers, then we are doing some um, digital modeling uh, of this sketch to go with um, six different models, then we choose three, then we choose one, and then we produce this one. So um, the main part we needed to change was the sketch modeling part because it's the, uh, the longest part uh, in our process. So um, that's an example of a sketch. Uh, the next one is the concept car from 2014. And based on this sketch, uh, we are doing some, some a first modelization. So before Blender, we used the nerves 
Um, so we, we are using alias for doing NURPS, from, alias from Autodesk. Um, the best point for the NURPS brought up, we, we can produce some very high quality surfacing and we can have a very, um, some very precise model, but it's very hard to modify, to do some modifications. So that means that it's not a very good way to do some sketch models. That's why we moved until uh, polygonal modeling and until Blender to be able to do a lot of modifications, some iterations, and then the data we um, export from Blender to the engineers are very light compared to everything we can get from Elias or from the scan data that we have um, from the clay modelers, or that's physical modelers. But we don't have enough precision and enough quality surfacing to do all our process uh, in polygonal modeling. That's why at one stage we are moving back into Alias to have some very high quality surfacing. So we move until the polygonal modeling for a gain of speed and to do some very critical and very fast iteration that wasn't achievable with the nerves. And we move until Blender because we didn't have enough uh, budget to say um, that, to be honest, uh, it has no cost for us and no cost for doing some, some try if you buy a license that costs too much and you do, a, you, do a li you do a try and then you just don't want to do that anymore. That's very expensive try. <laughs> and, um, I know Tony said that Blender is not intuitive. I will say that Blender is intuitive. Um, when I arrived in my company, I was the only one who can use Blender, and now we have all the team can use Blender, and it, the team uh, get it very speed on it, so that was very good. The main point for us for using Blender is when the head of uh, the design exterior just come and say, okay, we will do the changement in Blender because it's faster to do that in Blender than I can show you on Photoshop. So that's a very good point for us. Um, so basically the sketch modeling is, um, we have a sketch or a scan model that's coming from the designers and we will have to rebuild it then doing some modifications on it or doing some iterations. We are giving this data to the engineers that are doing some analysis and giving us some criteria. <coughs> and then after we are sending the model until um, the milling or to VRED to do some um, virtual presentations, uh, real-time presentations. And we are redoing these steps all the time uh, along the designer is not happy with the models. And when the designer is happy with the model, we are switching until alias to have some high quality surfacing. So um, when we have some high, uh, when we have, um, when we finish with the sketch modeling, we are switching until the um, go for three. So as I said before, we have six different design and we are choosing three. We are doing some more modifications. So we are reusing Blender for that, doing some modifications and then switching to Alias to get some high quality surfacing. Then we choose one design, doing a little bit of modifications and when we are happy, we are going to class A, so that's very high quality surfacing, and that is only do with alias because uh, very accurate um, data. At the same time, we are doing some uh, real-time presentation, some um, virtual renderings and animations. So for now, these steps are, uh, we are doing these steps with um, VRED from Autodesk. So basically the creation of a car is um, digitally is split in three steps, the advanced surfacing, advanced production, and the production surfacing. 
At the time of Charles, the, um, this is split in two teams, and I'm a part of the team who are working on the advanced and the early stage of the production surfacing. So um, now we'll, I won't show you, <laughs> but I will explain how we, uh, in, we integrate Blender in our process. That was for a project that I can't show you. If you want to be alive. <laughs> um, so basically, it took us four months to integrate Blender until in, uh, in our process, until the time I arrived in the company to June, by doing some, a first step of um, uh, rebuilding a scan, uh, testing with the engineers if they were happy with the, the data and doing some iterations. And then in June, we get the validation of uh, the exterior designer and the interior designer to integrate uh, Blender in our process. Uh, proof of concept that Blender can work in big company and in design studio. So um, basically, we did a base model. Then we did nine, in, yeah, nine iterations of this car. So um, with some different uh, wheelbase and different lens, different height. And to speak about times, because we chose Blender because it was a, um, the polygonal modeling because it was a gain of time for, uh, pro, pro, for doing the 10 variants of cars. It took us five days with two or three models. That's could took us 10 or 15 days with two or three models with Elias. So um, one week against three weeks of work, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so now we'll show you an example that uh, I did just for, the, um, just for the conferences to be a little bit more um, precise in what I'll speak about. So um, that's the next one, that's the show car of 2014 that I will modify for an example um, how to transform a show car into a production car. So that's just an example, I did it without a designer, just, just by myself. <laughs> so why not increasing the roof high, increasing the front overhang or some stuff like that. So basically, I first start by rebuilding the scan mesh um, with um, a very low poly model um, that we really need a low poly model because uh, we need to modify it after. So if there are too many poly polygons, it's too complicated to modify. And as you can see here, by snapping the um, the vertex on the scan, when we smooth it, it's just uh, too small because we don't have enough vertex. Um, so it's, we have to fit the new model to the scan. So that took us a very long time to do that normally we don't really have to spend all this time to fit the, our new model on the scan. And so that's, um, important part we have to to consider. And then when we have uh, this new model, we can um, try some modifications on it. So um, I will show you directly on the software. So um, the gray one is the scan model that we get um, from the clay modelers. Well, for this part, like it's a uh, car who already exists. That's the Elias model that I exported on, the, on Blender. And the blue one is the first, uh, the first model we, um, I did. So that's the one who doesn't fit to the, uh, we, we can see here, that doesn't fit to, to the scan. Then we, then we rebuild, uh, we fit the model to the scan, and we have 
this car. So that's not very accurate as a model. We don't really have um, all the details or all the informations. But once again, it's just, um, it's just a model for the shape. And we don't really need some, so many details on it when the, in the early stage of the um, production because it's, we just want to judge the design. So um, that's the production car, and uh, no, that's the neck, the sh the show car fitted in the scan with a little bit. Sorry. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, we have a little bit of modification. So as I said, increase the roof high, increase the front overhang, and things like this. Get the um, rear screen a little bit more vertical and things like this, we can have an example of what could be a production car. And, but then we can repeat this step as long as, you, as we want and do some more iterations and doing, why not, a four-wheel drive, four drive car. So that's basically what we did for the project that I can't show you. Um, did one base model and then after uh, created nine iterations uh, of this model. Then things we are doing with Blender 2 is uh, sometimes we have fun a little bit and we are doing some crazy cars that are not really cars. <laughs> So, what's next for uh, what's next for us at Tata Motors with Blender? So there are still some steps um, that takes a long time, or something we are well, not really happy with because uh, we are um, used to use alias and we are used to high quality surfacing. So um, we will be very happy with, if we can avoid um, the steps of uh, fitting the model to the scan. And we will be very happy if we can take the quality of surfacing, the reflections and things like this. There is already some matcap shading who already exists, but not as accurate as we can have in areas. Um, the proportional editing that doesn't take an area, but takes some the points we want, as you can see here, I just took this point and asked him to modify mod the three points after, but not the area, the three points around the, um, around the point I get. And we are still some problem of import and export files with the engineers and with the other software. So that's for now the thing we would like to improve, and for later, we are thinking about integrating Blender for the real time and for the renderings and animations. Why not um, just thinking about the 3D headset, thing like this, and if you have any other idea, just express yourself, tell me, and we would be very happy to do some tests and things like this. And so basically, until the end of the year, we would like to try an animation of 30 seconds. Then we now using Blender just in UK, so we will start a rollout into India and into Italy. Um, then we will have all Tata Motors using the same process, so the Blender in the early stage and then Alias. Um, we want to come back next year to do a statue, statue report, and if we are doing some stuff about, we will do some stuff about rendering an, an animation now we um, created a new process for that in the company because we don't really have any process now. And then in 2017, we will be relocated in the national automotive, uh, in the NIAC, I don't remember the name. 
uh, that we will be in partnership with GLR. So how can we work with GLR, uh, GLR that Jaguar Land Rover, sorry. How can we work with Jaguar Land Rover and how can we get all the other companies involved in the Blender development? Be crazy. <laughs> so um, thank you for your attention and if you have any questions or if you have any advices or something like this, just feel free to express yourself. Thank you. I think this isn't so much time for questions, so maybe very short one only, okay? Jonathan, you're closer. Uh, just a quick question as far as your, you know, the things that you struggle with in Blender. Do you struggle more with the, with the modeling tools or the surfacing quality? Do you, do you find the modeling tools to be sufficient or are there particular tools, say, from Alias that would be really beneficial? Um, I guess it's not, it's not really about, about the um, modeling tools, but um, we don't know every uh, modeling tools we know. I know that uh, we bought uh, Retopo Flow, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we are not using it. <laughs> 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 Be I, I can explain why, because when we want to use it, uh, it's creating too much uh, uh, faces, then we need to have a very, very low poly, that, so um, it's fa as fast as using rate of flow that creating the surfaces, but maybe in the next stage when we would like to have some more accurate um, models with Blender. We will definitely use it because I test it and it's work, working very well. <laughs> and yeah, so that's, we are, um, the thing we are really struggling with is to get the, um, to get the modeling f fitting the scan. That's the thing we are really struggling with. That's very important. I think you can understand that the designers are working very hard with the clay modelers who have like the perfect, um, perfect body shape, and we are doing that. And when we smooth it, everything is smaller, and it's like frustrating for them. And we will have just taking time to get exactly the perfect shape for our, to get something for them, and and even not for the designers and even for the engineers because we are giving this data to the engineers. If the roof is something like, I don't know, even one millimeter less than the car, it can change a lot of things. So that's, that's the thing we really struggle with uh, in modeling. Thank you. Thank you, Matilda.